Hello students, this uh, video is uh, a short demonstration about how the beer game works so that you can play together with your peers. Uh, we start a new game and we give it uh, some sort of name and uh, now you can select uh, if you want to use the default parameters. We will do this in, uh, in the demonstration here. If you click this away then you are free to choose the number of turns you will figure out here we play 50. You can define the sales variability and you can also, if you play together in groups, you could also allow communication in between the partners. For the time being, I select the default parameters, but as said, later on, you can also play this together with your peers and vary a little bit. I say send and then the new game is created and I can access it and here in fact I find the name of my game uh, and I did something else so I needed to do something else. So I will demonstrate now this video how this works from the retailer's perspective. So I click on the retailer and now I have the following picture here. So the outgoing order is what you need to discuss and uh, decide upon yourself, either discuss with your group or decide upon yourself how much you want to order. The outgoing order is what you order at your supplier in order to satisfy the demand of your uh, customer. So we are the retailer and our customer is the end customer. You have the incoming orders from your end customer in this uh, field placed here. It will increase or let's say decrease your stock immediately because if you have uh, the quantity of the incoming order available, then you will ship out uh, immediately this uh, order. So your stock will decrease uh, and this will be shipped out then to your end customer. And you here in this uh, decision field, you will uh, give uh, an outgoing order to your supplier. So your stock is decreased because of the incoming order from your end customer and you want to fill it up in order to be able to satisfy the next incoming orders. I decide to order 20 items um, that I have either discussed with myself the decision or I have made it up somewhere somehow. Uh, can be just a feeling or a forecast from experience. Then I click validate and here what you can also do beforehand is you click through the next tips. So you give you get information every week each stakeholder decides on the quantity to be ordered. Once all orders are plugged in a new turn will be launched and uh, you have a supply lead time for from the wholesaler that is two weeks. Uh, that uh, yeah what you ship out here will take two weeks to come in. <coughs> And here every week you will receive a purchase order from your customer that I explained already. Uh, if you have enough of stock of, uh, available, then the items will be sent immediately out. We will see this in the demonstration shortly. And otherwise, this will increase your backlog. <coughs> uh, here in the navigation bar, you will be able to see the number of turns that we play. And um, yeah, in this case, when we use the default settings, uh, the total number of turns uh, is hidden. Um, this is the prices of uh, the stock and the backlog. So we pay for each item on stock uh, 5 euros and uh, in case of backlogs, 25. So backlogs uh, cost us highly more than items in stock. And here you can click on uh, this field uh, to see the performance and uh, some statistics, uh, but I don't do that now. So I validate now my 20 uh, items uh, outgoing order. And now we see that uh, no other is connected to my game um, of the following stakeholders. Uh, so I want to play against the computer. Yes, I want this and uh, I don't want to have this displayed anymore. So I click don't show me anymore and I say send anyway and then I would play against the computer. So what we've seen now very shortly is we had an incoming order of uh, four units that uh, we sent out immediately. We had 12 units on stock. So now we have remaining eight units 
and uh, we have no backlog and this was our first turn. Um, now I decide that I want to order in the next turn 10 um, items. Then you have seen I had an incoming order of four units uh, that were shipped out immediately. So we had eight units on stock uh, minus the four units ordered uh, is four units still in stock. And now we have the first uh, incoming order. So I decide to order again 10 units. And we had 12 units coming in from uh, the computer, so from our wholesaler. Uh, it seemed I ordered 20, so it seems that he was not able to deliver this 20, but just, uh, but just uh, 12 units, and this is how it goes. So, so here you see also that you can experience that uh, someone in the supply chain cannot manage to send you the overall order, uh, so there is some uncertainty about what you order here as well. I decide once again, this is the third turn that you can see here, to order again 10 because the incoming order was 4 and the stock is 12, so that is still fine. And once again, I have 12 units coming in. And uh, here we had the so 12 units coming in from my uh, supplier. Um, and I had an order from uh, my end customer of four units once again that I could satisfy. So the stock uh, for me is at eight units. And this is still fine. I get now 12 units, so I decide to order 10 again and so forth. So you see, you have to make up your mind how much you want to, uh, to order. And that is your decision to be made. Now we can click uh, on the performance indicator. And, and here we can monitor our price. So we have a stock that is declining um, and costs that are occurring. And these costs uh, will go up from turn to turn that we play. And the order size is depicted here. So you have an overview here of how you're performing.